Welcome to Make Workshop, where we check out tech, tools, and toys built from makers. Today, we're going to be checking out the Spark Maker Original. This is a $250 resin based 3D printer. This is not a full review of this printer. You'll have to tune in or check out the uh, magazine for full reviews. This is more just a look over and a quick thoughts on the printer. The Spark Maker was originally a crowdfunding uh, campaign that was successful and they have delivered an actual machine. They've managed to get the cost down extremely low so that you can do some uh, resin based 3D printing in your home. As for specs, we have a build area of 98 by 55 millimeters and 125 millimeters tall. The way these work is that they have a UV LED light that is masked by a LCD panel. What light makes it through the mask cures the resin on top of that. It's kind of a simple process. You can see the results of that process are pretty impressive. Let's compare some prints a little bit. Here we have an Einstein model printed by the Spark Maker Original. Lots of detail there. And comparing that here to the uh, fused filament style print, we can see that there is an incredible difference in detail and quality. Now I'm not going to tell you what brand of printer I used for this fused filament print. It's a decent print, however, my printer has been used, abused, and beaten, and I don't feel like it would be fair to show this as an example of that company's uh, results. But this is kind of what I've come to expect out of fused filament printers. It looks pretty good, it could have some improvements, but an, a resin printer really gives you a whole new level of detail. Now it isn't perfect. If we look really close, we can see the voxelization, which is the result of the pixels on the LCD screen around the, uh, you know, around the nose and on the chin, but you really have to look close. If you're holding it even at an arm's length here, you can't see that stuff, which is impressive. And you could expect that from pretty much any uh, resin printer. One of the downsides to these printers is that since they don't have the strongest possible source of UV to cure the uh, material, kind of like um, a laser for example, the prints can take a while. For example, this Einstein took 15 hours to print and this one took 2 hours. Now it's hard to say that that's a fair comparison whenever you look at the result but whenever you're making parts that maybe are more functional and less visual, it's something to consider. So let's look at some of the features of this printer. Now this printer being extremely cheap is pretty bare bones. There's just a dial that is also a button and it has an LED inside of it that changes colors between red and green. And that's it for an interface. You don't get an LCD or anything to tell you the status of your print or to select multiple prints for this machine. You put a single print on your card, make sure you name it the specific name it's looking for and hit the button and it prints and that's it. But at $250, it's hard to complain about such a bare bones system. Another way they're keeping costs down is that they're shipping it bare bones as well. All that comes in the package is the printer, its power supply, the instruction manual, a memory card, two Allen wrenches, and a container full of uh, printing material. Some other brands you might have seen will come with other things like specialized tools for cleaning and uh, other tools that you might need during your time with the printer. For a real review, I feel like we'd have to use this for an extended amount of time to see how it holds up over time. Things could wear out on this. For example, that LCD screen going through multiple heat cycles could wear out. Luckily, they sell replacement components for this for pretty cheap. An LCD screen for this is $15 on their website, and it looks fairly easy to work on. These printers are very simply constructed. There's only one motor, the rest is a board, for the controls, a board for the LED light, and then your LCD. It's extremely simple. One of the things you have to keep in mind if you're thinking about trying out resin printing is the fact that you're dealing with resin. Resin is generally a toxic mess that you don't want to deal with. Um, your prints all have to go through a process of being bathed in alcohol and scrubbed and bathed some more and then cured afterwards in a UV LED light or out under the sun to 
further that curing all the way in to make sure it's completely safe to handle. However, the results can be impressive. Let's talk about uh, software a little bit. This machine uses its own slicer, which is, like the machine, extremely bare bones. It's only for this machine. You have a drop-down selector for what material you want to use, which has their materials. I didn't see the material that they included in the list, but I may have just done that wrong. Um, either way, I left it as the default material and it printed just fine. It's got some nice features like being able to add and remove supports, uh, place them where you want them, but don't expect a whole lot of other features out of it. It's not the fastest slicer out there, but it did get the job done, and again, at $250 total for the printer, it's hard to really complain about much. There is another slicer out there that works with pretty much any uh, SLA printer. I'll put a link to that down in the description below. You may have to tweak some things and do a little bit of experimentation, but you'll have a little bit more features at your disposal. To find out more about this specific printer, go to sparkmaker3d.com. You'll find this printer, and then they even have one that's a step up from this printer that we've not yet had a chance to play with. Be sure to subscribe to this channel and click that little notification bell so that you can know every time we release a new cool video.